Amen. For I believe in the name of Jesus. That's why we're here. That's why we do what we do. For we believe in the name of Jesus. If you've been with us over the last couple of weeks, maybe in person, maybe online, we've been looking at a little sermon series that I called Everyone Matters, and it's very important because you matter, I matter, and everyone matters, and everyone needs to connect with the power and the gospel of Jesus Christ. So up on the screen there, I saw this quote during the week. Let the people who speak words of faith lift the atmosphere of every room we walk into and tell others about our miracle working God. Let us lift the room. Let us tell people about the miracle working God that we serve and honour and proclaim here this day. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that we can just pause for a moment and hear from your word. Be reminded again this week that everybody matters, that everyone has a story, and you are writing that story. Thank you, Lord, for the ups and downs and twists and turns, for the crossroads where you meet us, God. Lord, may we be pre people that bring praises to you, that honour you in all that we do and say. Lord God, I want to hear afresh from you this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. In the Gospel of John, in the first chapter there, we read this verse. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A young child by the name of Dana received an Operation Christmas Child shoebox. She writes, I spent most of my childhood doing my homework in the dark under a burning gas lamp. A war erupted in the Middle Eastern country where I lived. We had no electricity only for eight hours a day, and then it was dark. Not only was my country physically dark, it was also spiritually dark. My family experienced the effects of this darkness, as we were the only Christians in our village. When we shared the gospel with our neighbours, we received heavy persecution and death threats, urging us to stop, or my father would be killed. I experienced darkness at school as well, when I was bullied for my faith. Often my heart sank deep within me as I felt the rejection of those around me. Persecution was affecting my family from the outside, but from the inside, poverty was taking over. We often lacked food, and sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, we only had raw onion and bread for dinner. Mm -hmm. We lived in a small apartment with no furniture, no couches or beds. I desired to have new clothes, a doll and some toys to play with, but we couldn't afford them. And I didn't ever receive any gifts for Christmas or for my birthday. Yet my parents continuously encouraged me to be content and to keep my eyes on Jesus. Each night mum would recite with me Psalm 23 and she would pray with me and taught me to pray and to bring all my needs to God. During this season of darkness, Christian resources were limited. Aside from finding other Christians to meet, a Christian radio station started and they would broadcast two hours a day. My family desired to have access to this station, but we couldn't afford a radio. Being a family of prayer, we brought this need to God. Then God pierced through our darkness. Amid the war, poverty and persecution, I was given a gift of a beautifully wrapped shoebox packed by someone halfway across the world who wanted to show me God's love. My family gathered around as we opened the shoebox. And as I opened it, my heart was filled with joy. I found many things that were an answer to my prayers and reflected my innermost self as well. There were hygiene items, school supplies, beautiful toys. There was a slinky and a beanie bear. As we rejoiced over each of these items in the box, 
there was another surprise awaiting inside for us. Inside the shoe box was a smaller box. And inside the smaller box, we found a mini radio. Out of the millions of boxes, God orchestrated that box to come to our family and to come to me, for he had heard our prayers. That day, as I sat in, a, in my room holding my box, the darkness didn't go away, but it was overcome by God's light. Just as the Bible says in 1 John 5, the, darkness sh the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. From that day forward, every time I turned on the radio, I was, I was reminded that God is the God of details. In a unique yet ordinary way, He pierced through the surrounding darkness and showed me that I am seen and I am loved by Him, even re when rejected by God. Many. There are times when darkness seems too overwhelming and blinds us from seeing God's presence, His presence in our lives. The enemy uses many forms of attack to blur and even blind our vision of the one true light. But God is not deterred by the darkness around us. Let us continue to seek God even when Everything is dark and everything is hard. God is actively working behind the scenes. He is still the God of love, the God of peace, and the God of answered prayers. Amen. John 8, 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Today, Dana is a national spokesperson for Operation Christmas Child. Everyone matters. God sees it all. God hears it all. God loves us all. You matter. I matter. From a young girl in the Middle East to a mum in Moray Field to a dad across the road. God cares. If you're feeling squeezed by the culture around you because you've chosen to lift high the name of Jesus, friends, you are in good company. Our best days are still ahead. Let us hold on to confidence. Confidence in God's promise, hope and outcomes. Showing a lost world around us how great is our God. We are the scattered and we are the gathered. We are his hands and feet. We are his church. We rub shoulders with people who don't get it, who don't understand, who never think about our Jesus. But guess what? They still matter. And God has placed you there as his hands and feet and light of hope and truth. How do we live with confidence as we go through life? Friends, I'm banking on the Word of God and the power of prayer. Following His plans and His principles mapped out for me in the pages of Scripture. What are you choosing? What are you doing? What about you? In 1 Peter 2, 4 and 5. As you come to Him, the living stone, Rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to Him. This is Jesus. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. God is building us as His church. Globally, locally, you and I, here in this place, here in this church, He has chosen you as a living stone. Let Him mould you, shape you, build you up. In 1 Peter 2.10 we read, Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. 
Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. 1 Peter 2.10 Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. God has called you together. God has drawn you together to be His church. Maybe you're lost. Maybe you're confused. Maybe you're without hope today. God has brought us together to be His people. Building us together. Once you had no, not received mercy. But now you receive His gift of mercy. The road won't be easy. The GPS may not work all the time. Maybe you're ready to give up. The question today is very simple. Who do you think Jesus is? Who are you putting your hope and trust in? Come and receive his salvation. Come and receive his mercy because you matter. Will Jesus be your cornerstone or your stumbling block? Will you receive his mercy today or reject it? Or go home, not changed. Oh, that was a nice song. The black talked okay. Had a nice biscuit. Will you receive his mercy? Or reject it. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. It's confronting. It's hard. But it's rewarding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. That is where I'm planting my feet. This is the key. In order to hold on to God, you have to let go of whatever else you were previously holding on to, clinging to, in order to trust in Him, you lean not on your own understanding. Can I say for a moment that is hard? And it, and it seems unfair to tell me to not to lean. I'm wired to lean on my own understanding. Some would say that's the strength. That's how I live my life. That's how I figure things out. That's what I do. But when you get to the place where you let go of your own understanding, your own plans, your own desires, your own will, your own strategy, your own place of comfort, and when you cling to the one who is the rock that will never fail you, you come and you cling to the faithfulness, you cling to the goodness, you cling to the mercy of God who has your best interests at heart because why? You matter to Him. You matter and you care. He cares. He loves you. Then anything else that brought you the illusion of security before fades away in the presence and the strength and the goodness and the grace of Almighty God, as we take a step and He plants our feet. Because I'm trusting in Him with all my heart. Takes courage, takes faith. Because you matter. Because you matter. Let God speak over your life this morning. Let the Holy Spirit of God come and just refresh your soul. 
Whatever your prayer, whatever your need, whatever your concern. Because people matter. Lives matter. People's salvation matters. And you all matter. A final slide today reminds us I am loved. I am valued. A bit small, isn't it? I am a child of God. I am a new creation. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I don't know all of your stories and all of your journeys and all of your ups and downs. But maybe at some point in your life you've been told, I don't love you. Maybe you felt that you weren't valued. Maybe, maybe your life or your family situation was dysfunctional. Maybe you feel like you've got nothing to offer. But here today, God is simply saying, you matter. Because I am loved, and I am valued, and I am a child of God, and I am a new creation, and I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and I am standing on those things. Let God speak over your life today. Amen.